In life, you will encounter various types of people. There are those whom we only meet for a few seconds, yet they leave a tremendously positive impression on us, helping us to love life more, be happier, and trust in humanity more. But there are also those who constantly make us uncomfortable, annoyed, lose faith, and feel desperate. They are the kind of people you wouldn't want to meet, even for just a few fleeting seconds in life. The older I get, the more I understand that not everyone deserves our respect or trust. People belonging to the latter group are becoming more common in life. And sometimes, the most valuable lesson we need to learn is to not pay attention to their thoughts or words. Stoicism teaches us that no one cares about us more than themselves. People around only care about their own interests and emotions. So today, we will explore nine types of people whom you don't need to give your trust or respect to. Let's learn how to identify them and how to protect ourselves from the negative influences they may bring. Before we begin, I have a challenge for you. Watch the video until the end so you don't miss any of the nine types that I will discuss. And especially pay attention to one of them because only one type of person on this list could truly be the key to expanding your understanding of yourself and the world around you. By leaving a comment, I accept the challenge. You will create an opportunity for us to learn and grow together through each other's perspectives and experiences. Number one, the narcissist. We often encounter individuals whose arrogance exhausts us. A prominent characteristic of someone excessively self-loving or what is commonly known as a narcissist is their constant endeavor to highlight themselves while disregarding the contributions of others. This behavior not only diminishes the value of relationships but can also foster a toxic environment. Take, for example, a manager in a company who always seeks attention and praise from others. When a project succeeds, they quickly claim all the credit without acknowledging the contributions of team members. In meetings, they frequently dismiss their colleagues' opinions or even unnecessarily rebut them just to assert their own viewpoint. Psychological researchers have pointed out that individuals with such traits often harbor a deep fear of not being recognized or being rejected. They try to compensate for this by controlling their emotions and image in front of others. Stoic philosophy, with its emphasis on tranquility and acceptance, can help us understand and better deal with such individuals. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, once said, when you are distressed by an external thing, it's not the thing itself that troubles you, but only your judgment of it. And you can wipe this out at a moment's notice. This advice helps us realize that instead of being swept away by negative emotions, we can choose a more composed and self-directed approach. In the journey of confronting and understanding egotistical individuals, we not only learn how to protect ourselves from negative influences, but also develop patience and inner strength. By applying lessons from Stoic philosophy, we learn to maintain our composure, not only in interactions, but also in how we respond to the world around us. Number two, the manipulator. In the darkness of toxic relationships, manipulators lurk in the shadows, 
skillfully concealing their true nature, making them challenging to identify. They not only breed suspicion and break trust, but also render victims feel helpless and controlled, like puppets in their game. Dr. Danielle Hairston vividly illustrates this behavior as a manipulative tactic, carefully calculated and cunning. They often use phrases like, you're overreacting, that's not what I meant, or you're crazy to distort the truth, weaken the other's judgment and push them into a state of self-doubt. This leads to a vortex of darkness, where victims gradually lose their personal power and their own voice. Analyzing specific signs, we find that this psychological manipulation is often executed subtly and cleverly. Victims may not perceive the severity of the situation until they are deeply entrenched in it. It's crucial to learn to identify these behaviors and address them transparently. Stoic philosophy, with its emphasis on understanding and accepting the things we cannot change, provides us with tools to resist manipulation. It underscores nurturing inner strength and not letting external factors erode us. Like Marcus Aurelius, an emperor, and Stoic philosopher once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Reflect on how you can apply Marcus Aurelius advice to recognize and resist manipulators in your life. This question is not just a self-empowerment exercise, but also a powerful reminder of your own agency in shaping the world around you. Join the conversation in our comments section. Have you ever faced manipulators in your life? Share your story and let us know what methods you've used to identify and overcome these challenges. Together, we can learn and grow stronger. One of the greatest challenges we face is recognizing and protecting ourselves from those who are undeserving of trust or respect. Third parties always feel unfairly treated and miserable. This can be a real trial. Not only do they seek sympathy, but they can also unwittingly drain our energy and positive spirits. Number three, the victim. A victim always lives negatively and believes that all their problems stem from others. They insist that their actions do not help solve their problems, so they feel completely helpless. We may encounter this type of person every day, feeling sorry for them and wanting to help and not even realizing that they may exploit our empathy for their own purposes. Victims often disrupt the energy around them by constantly blaming circumstances or others for their own difficulties. This not only creates a negative environment, but also makes them dependent on pity and attention from others to feel better about themselves. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, once said, it's not what happens to you but how you react to it that matters. This statement is particularly true for victims. They choose to perceive events in a pessimistic framework rather than accepting responsibility and seeking to change their circumstances. A specific example of this can be seen in relationships where one party always feels exploited in a small office in the city, Mike and Linda are close colleagues. However, Linda often feels exploited by Mike. Mike, who always plays the victim, 
seems to use his emotions as a tool to control Linda. Whenever there's a new project, Mike always describes himself as under immense pressure and unable to contribute much, leaving Linda to do most of the work. He also frequently demands sympathy from Linda and those around him, but never acknowledges or praises their efforts. Although Linda wants to help Mike, she begins to realize that Mike's complaints are actually a way for him to avoid responsibility and shift the burden onto others. This not only weakens the positive energy in the relationship, but also leaves Linda feeling drained and helpless. Over time, Linda learns to set boundaries with Mike, refusing to let his emotions dictate her and encouraging him to face the issues instead of avoiding them. Linda realizes that she needs to protect her own balance and well-being first, even if it means rejecting some of his demands. How do you protect yourself from those who exploit your compassion? It's important to recognize when your compassion is being taken advantage of and to set boundaries in that relationship. Deep awareness of the toxic nature of playing the victim not only helps you protect yourself, but also helps the person learn to save themselves instead of waiting for salvation from the outside. Number four, the judgmental. It can be said that judgmental people or the judgmental are often those who assess others through a lens lacking in empathy and profound understanding, displaying selfishness and a lack of self-awareness. They fail to recognize that each individual is a unique entity with strengths, weaknesses and unique circumstances. Epictetus, one of the famous Stoic philosophers, said, We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. He not only values the importance of listening, but also emphasizes the significance of maintaining silence before passing judgment. That silence allows us to carefully consider our words and their impact on others. In reality, many people often fail to realize the negative impact of judgmental remarks on others' psyche. A clear example of the harm of judgment can be seen in the case of Alex, a young street artist. Alex has a very unique sense of fashion, often wearing colorful outfits. When he shares images of himself on Instagram, he receives a large amount of negative comments. Many criticize his style, deeming it inappropriate and too different. Instead of receiving encouragement, Alex feels isolated, gradually losing confidence and creativity. These malicious comments not only fail to bring about positive change, but also make him increasingly pessimistic. This illustrates that judgment not only weakens individual psyche, but can also destroy a person who is trying to contribute value to the community through art. Therefore, before judging others, have you ever wondered if you have enough knowledge about their circumstances and emotions. This is a question that each of us, as followers of Stoic philosophy, should contemplate every day. Ultimately, judging others not only reflects a lack of understanding, but also indicates weakness in self-control. Judgment not only brings no benefit, but also deprives us of the opportunity to improve ourselves and build positive relationships with others. Remember that kindness and understanding always bring greater value than criticism and judgment. 
We would love to hear your thoughts on this issue. Have you ever experienced being unfairly judged by others? Or have you ever realized that you were judging others without enough understanding? Please share your experiences and thoughts on how to minimize the harm of judgment and instead cultivate greater understanding and empathy in daily life. Your contributions are highly valued by our community. Number 5. The Criticizer Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you faced relentless criticism without understanding the root cause? Are those criticisms constructive feedback or simply attempts to belittle others? In Stoic philosophy, we are encouraged to approach criticism calmly and purposefully using it to improve ourselves without allowing it to harm our souls. However, the criticizer isn't merely offering constructive criticism. They often use criticism as a tool to belittle and control others. For example, Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and renowned Stoic philosopher, advised the object of life is not to be on the side of the majority, but to escape finding oneself in the ranks of the insane. He describes an ideal approach where one uses criticism as a tool for personal growth and improvement rather than to harm others. This requires restraint, self-awareness and the ability to discern between constructive criticism and valueless negativity. By following Marcus Aurelius' advice, we not only learn to accept feedback more effectively, but also maintain healthy relationships with those around us, thereby fostering a more positive and supportive environment for work and life. However, the critics we're discussing here are those who constantly seek to publicly expose others' faults without intending to support or improve the situation. This not only creates a tense environment, but also undermines the self-esteem of those around them. They may use criticism as a means to shape others' perceptions of you, thereby significantly influencing relationships and personal development opportunities. What are your thoughts on responding to such critics? Should we empower them in this way? Reflect on this and consider whether you're allowing negative criticism to affect your life. In the Stoic way of life, we learn to focus on what's within our control and let go of unnecessary desires. However, there are those who constantly covet others' success with envy-filled eyes. They often seek to diminish the value of others' achievements to alleviate their own sense of lack. We'll explore why such individuals don't deserve our trust and respect and how to maintain our integrity without letting their envy affect us. Number 6. The Envious Jealousy, a strong and often negative emotion, can disrupt our lives in unexpected ways. For example, you might feel uncomfortable seeing your neighbor win a free vacation or your colleague quickly achieve a promotion. American psychologist Joel Frank described jealousy as a combination of fear, insecurity and comparison, a feeling that often silently occupies our minds. This not only erodes trust and intimacy between people, but can also lead them to confuse jealousy with healthy competition or arrogance from the other party. To deal with this, psychologists advise that we learn to recognize clear signs that someone is jealous of us, helping us handle the situation more wisely and effectively. From the perspective of Stoic philosophy, 
Jealousy is not just a personal obstacle, but also an expression of ignorance about the true nature of happiness and success. The philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Blind jealousy not only robs us of inner peace, but also obscures our ability to see the true value in our own lives. In reality, those prone to jealousy often view the success of others as indirect criticism of themselves. They fail to realize that success is a personal journey and has nothing to do with comparison. They easily overlook their own achievements and values, opting instead for relentless comparison. Those who pursue a stoic lifestyle are advised to focus on self-development and find joy in personal achievements without needing validation from others. This requires a shift from valuing self-worth based on others' achievements to recognizing and appreciating the process of striving and self-improvement. You see, practicing Stoicism not only helps us overcome jealousy, but also brings true mental freedom. Have you ever felt jealous? And how do you deal with that feeling? Let's share and reflect on the lessons that can be applied from Stoicism to cope with this emotion. Number 7. The Gossip Monger Imagine you're sitting in a quiet cafe when suddenly you overhear a group at the neighboring table gossiping about someone's personal life. Their words echo in your head, not only bothering you, but inadvertently creating a web of resentment and misunderstanding. In Stoic philosophy, the gossip monger is seen as the cause of much unwarranted trouble. They use words as a tool for manipulation and destruction rather than for building and supporting. For instance, Andrew, an office worker, became notorious not for his professionalism or outstanding achievements, but for his habit of regularly gossiping and spreading unverified stories about his colleagues. Andrew didn't just share information, he crafted subtle variations of the truth. This behavior not only cost him respect from those around him, but also sowed seeds of suspicion and discord throughout the office. People began to doubt each other, trust diminished, and what was once a cooperative and supportive work environment became tense and rife with scheming. Andrew's story reflects a valuable lesson on how words can not only tarnish others' reputations, but also negatively impact the speaker themselves. The negative consequences of spreading rumors extend beyond personal relationships and permeate communities, creating invisible barriers to communication and interaction. In this context, what do you think about taking action when hearing someone speak ill of others? Should we remain indifferent or should we speak up to defend the truth? Stoicism teaches us that the key to maintaining inner peace is not to get caught up in the dangerous game of words. Faced with gossipers, we need to remain steadfast and not allow this negativity to affect our lives. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, if you are pained by external things, it is not they that disturb you, but your own judgment of them and it is in your power to wipe out that judgment now. In conclusion, gossipers are not worthy of our trust or respect. They have chosen a path of destruction instead of contributing to collective growth. In this ever-changing world, 
we need to choose true companions who not only bring warmth, but also help us build a better future together. Each of us dreams of having companions on every path, those who will stand by us through happiness and hardship. However, not everyone is resilient enough to endure life's storms. Some friends, like passing breezes, only come when the sun shines brightly and disappear when clouds gather. They are gentle, fair-weather friends who cannot weather the storm. Let's reflect on this harsh reality through the lens of Stoic philosophy to understand that not every relationship deserves our trust and respect. Number 8. The Fair-Weathered Friend have you ever wondered why some relationships easily break when faced with difficulties? Or why do some people only show up when they need you, but disappear when you need them? The fair-weathered friend is someone who appears very friendly and supportive when everything is going smoothly, but quietly disappears when you face challenges. These relationships don't deserve our respect or trust because they are not built on a solid foundation of truth, loyalty and commitment. We can see examples of fair-weathered friends in daily life. Imagine a colleague who is always eager to hang out with you whenever you're footing the bill, suggesting fancy restaurants and expensive movie theatres. However, whenever it's their turn to pay, they suddenly have urgent matters to attend to. This situation repeats, leaving you feeling taken advantage of. On the other hand, you have a friend who always shares their successes with you and seeks praise from you. But when you encounter difficulties and need empathy or a shoulder to lean on, this friend is never there. These examples illustrate the one-sidedness of relationships and the lack of genuine support when you need it most. To build a meaningful and happy life, we need to be self-sufficient and not rely on others' acceptance or presence. This leads to a question. Are you holding on to any relationships that only provide value when everything is going well? and disappear when you truly need them. Life is sometimes a lonely journey, but it's in that solitude that we can truly recognize who our real friends are. A fair-weathered friend may brighten the atmosphere when the sun is shining, but only a true friend can walk with you through the storm. Treasure those relationships and learn to let go of those who are not worthy of your trust and respect. Number 9. The Flatterer Before we embark on the journey of exploring the world of flatterers in our minds and beliefs, let's pause and reflect on the importance of trust and respect in life. We always seek those worthy of trust and respect. But have we clearly distinguished between them and those who only know their own selfish purposes? Flattery is a frightening reality in modern society. They create a glossy facade of praise and false understanding to gain our trust and respect. However, the consequences of trusting them can make us lose confidence and become easy prey for their schemes. A clear example of the danger of flatterers is in corporate environments. There, those with ill intentions use praise to lure others into their vortex. They may thrive on our desire for recognition and advancement, but in reality, they only want to exploit us to achieve their personal goals. Their deceitful words are a trap, one we often fall into unknowingly. 
it's important that we learn to recognize and avoid this deception. So how do we deal with flatterers? The best approach may be to keep ourselves vigilant and discerning. We need to carefully evaluate every praise and kind word, not easily believing them without scrutiny and deep thought. Finally, as we continue on the path of self-awareness and exploration, remember that in every challenge, there's an opportunity for growth. Recognizing and distinguishing between truth and falsehood is not just a lesson, but also a significant step in building a meaningful and trustworthy life. If we pause to reflect and face the truth, we have the opportunity to broaden our horizons and grasp what truly matters in life. Be strong and determined, for as Carl Jung once said, I am not what happened to me, I am what I choose to become. In life, determining who is trustworthy and worthy of respect is an important part of building relationships and limiting the influence of those with negative attitudes. However, according to Stoic philosophy, criticizing and excluding others is not always the best method of dealing with them. Instead, we can use principles such as compassion, patience and empathy to confront them and create positive change. So, after watching the nine people don't deserve your trust, and respect, we can ask ourselves, is completely removing them from our lives really the best way to solve the problem? Or can we apply Stoic philosophy to change our perspective and approach the issue differently? Please share your thoughts by commenting below with your satisfaction level with this video. A. Dissatisfied B. Neutral C. Satisfied D. Extremely satisfied Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to the channel to continue watching the next videos on philosophy and personal development. Don't forget to watch the next videos displayed at the end of today's video to pursue Stoic philosophy. Thank you for watching. See you in the next videos.